It's already been proven right. Women's football is a product that people want to watch. The determination, the self-belief, the teamwork. I was literally mind blown. I've wasted a whole career in football. I should have been playing rugby. <laughs>what a view and what a trip so far we've done manchester brighton and now we're back home in london look at it for the final of euro 2022 we've covered over 300 miles and had some amazing chats with both alex and laura and best yet rose i'm still unbeaten in all three of them challenges listen we'll see if that's true by the end of the day but <laughs> tell me why are we down in beautiful richmond well we've ticked cricket and boxing off the list so it's only right we head to rugby territory now to meet another inspiring trailblazer well i'm excited should we head in some yeah come on in let's go we ever imagine growing up that women's football would be in the place it is today <laughs> like selling out arenas on home soil is just crazy right these conversations that we're having around women's football we weren't even having conversations like this a few years ago no. five years ago in the last two years i'd say it's really picked up and yeah. women have started getting the recognition and what they deserve back then we didn't even understand that there was a clear route into yeah. Yeah. professional football. Like mm -hmm. I, I never grew up and thought that's a career path. Yeah. And I think that's what's so important now. We, we've not, not only got role models, but we've actually got access and streamlined avenues to make it. Mm -hmm. And I think those are like two key things that we definitely miss. Seeing the array of different fans that have turned up now, like men and women of all different backgrounds, all yeah. different ages, yeah. I just think it's shown where the women's game's gone now. I just remember like having a bit of a moment. It's one all England versus Spain, right? <laughs> and Georgia Stanway pulls off that rocket in extra time. Like the noise, that atmosphere, the feeling mm. like that you got sitting there being involved in that. I, I, I'll be honest, like I, I think it's one of those moments you never forget. Women's football is a product that people want to watch. TV audiences, records broken. <laughs> Attendances at games, records broken. It's proven the point. Like, I think sometimes people maybe went into the tournament questioning whether or not it was going to get that traction. Well, it has, and it's here to stay. Ten times over, right? <laughs> and do you know what? You've got young girls growing up wanting to be Leah Williamson's oh, of this no. world, Lucy Bronze of this world. <laughs> They're going to want to start playing and training like them from an earlier age, which means we're going to be producing better players as mm. well. Yeah, exciting. So exciting, and what great role models for them to have, right? Yeah, exactly. Let's go and meet our next trailblazer, shall we? Let's do it. Come on. So Z, we've been meeting different trailblazers from up and down the country in different sports. For you though, you know, as a black Muslim woman from a traditional Ghanaian background, you must have had a different journey and story to a lot of rugby players out there, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think you, you sort of touched on there, the sort of the intersectionality of my identity, being black, being Muslim, being a woman, especially within a male dominated sport, there's lots I could go on. Even just telling my parents that I want to play rugby, that was sort of my first hurdle because my mum was okay. She was just like, oh, don't get injured. That was her main concern. <laughs> my dad, on the other hand, was like, it's a man's sport. It's an elite wow. sport. Why do you want to play rugby? You know, he couldn't understand why his Muslim daughter wanted to play rugby. Um, but now I'll say he's as proud as punch. <laughs> <laughs> I actually genuinely say that. And that means the world to me. Job Absolutely, done. yeah. We need to speak to you about your nickname, right? The Bulldozer. We've read that it has like a little bit of a double meaning for you. Absolutely. Talk us through that. Me being a Muslim black woman in rugby in a male dominated space, I'm smashing stereotypes and breaking down barriers. So I feel like it's a metaphor for who I am, but also what I'm trying to do. So yeah, the Bulldozer. So rugby in England has this like old school drinking culture. As a Muslim woman, is that something that you've had to deal with whilst learning the sport? Yeah, and I think it only sort of 
came to me when I went to university. Because you think of the university as like, you know, fresh as fair, everyone's going out, <laughs> getting drunk. And I used to shy away from going to socials because I thought I didn't want to be the only one that's not drinking while everyone else is getting drunk and having a good time. You know, rugby is such a sport, like teamwork and camaraderie that I really wished I had more bonding time off the pitch. Rugby in general though, whether it's men's or women's, there seems to be this sense of community and togetherness. Do you feel like it's allowed you to meet other players from different backgrounds and connect on that level? Yes, absolutely. And actually being here at Richmond, it's actually the most diverse club I've been at, which is so heartwarming because I remember when I used to go to rugby clubs and I would feel like, like I didn't fit in, like I was the only black girl, the only Muslim girl, but here, there's just so much of a mix and diverse array of people that I feel at home. It's definitely made me learn about other people's cultures and backgrounds. And I think that's what's special about the sport. It's something precious to know that you're bringing people from different walks of life together for the love of the game, you know? So in terms of rugby, what are the biggest challenges in achieving parity? The main things that I think about is visibility. And from when I started playing rugby, I didn't even know like the women's rugby existed in terms of like international level because I never saw it on the TV. I saw men playing rugby, but women nowhere. Recently, it's been a really positive shift. Um, we're seeing sort of the Premier 15s being broadcasted on BBC. Um, we can watch the games on there, even the international matches can also catch. I think that's a positive step. There's obviously a lot of other things that need to happen, but we're growing in the right direction. You know, we're having talks about making sure we professionalise the Premier 15s league, which is very exciting. So VW are running this amazing campaign throughout the Euros and it's hashtag not women's football. How would you interpret that in terms of rugby? For me, it's about values. So when I watched the Euros game the other week, England versus Spain, oh, the determination, the self-belief, yeah. the teamwork, I was just, I was literally mind blown. It goes beyond the women kicking the ball. It's more than just women's rugby, it's about the values, more than just women's football as well, it's about the values that you learn on and off the pitch. And for me, that's how I sum up that hashtag. As you can tell, me and Mo are built to be rugby players, right? We're built for it. You can't yeah. see in this shirt. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Richmond are prepping the pitch at the moment for the season ahead, so we're going to head down the road and take on the challenge. Let's go. Let's go. We're on our way to Chiswick Rugby Club, just a stone's throw away from where you picked up your first ever rugby ball. Talk to us, like, was it an instant connection for you? I will say it was, and I know it sounds cliche, but generally when I first touched rugby ball, I was just like, where's the sport been in my life? I was buzzing, running through people. I was the only one out of my classmates that actually was happy and, you know, buzzing to be there playing rugby. So yeah, it was just one of those things that I felt connected to instantly. Right, girls, it's challenge time. Miles, you gonna read it out? Right, we're gonna go head to head in a drop kick penalty shootout. Right. Each kick is gonna get increasingly hard as we get closer to the post, right? The final kick is from the try line. And the, do you know how that is? Yeah, it's just at yeah. the back, yeah? All right. <laughs> and it's right. worth double points, all right? Z will be passing us the ball. Uh -huh. Five attempts, the person who gets the most points wins. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> okay, sit in. Drop back. Boom! Whoa, that was First good, one. nice. Number one, number one, there we go. Follow that. What she do, visualise. Visualise. Sat back like that. And then she just went, let me just wait for that bit win. Yes, come on! <laughs> come on, <Nice>. mate. <laughs> yes. All right, I've got to give you that. It went over. Just double checking. Right, lean in. Come on, you've got this. Come on, girl. No! Rose, next time I think you should let it go. <laughs> See, tell her. <laughs> I'll only ask you for tips. <laughs> Cheers. Please, Mo. Ooh! Oh! <laughs> oh, you're all seeing this. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I've wasted a whole career in football. I should have been playing rugby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, move along. Uh, you're two one up, right? Yep. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Come on. Do you know what? I felt that. I, I knew <laughs> I was going to get that. <laughs> no. Oh, 
What are we on, Rose? Two, 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 two. two, two. No! Oh! <laughs> 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 oh! <laughs> oh, oh, my wife's oh. gone into you. Oh, it's clicked. Oh, it's clicked. I could do this all night, Rosie. Here we go, Z. No. Unlucky. It's okay. Uh, thanks, Z. Not going to think about it too much. Oh, so close. All right, last one. If I get this, it's a miracle mark. Can you hear me over there? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> oh. Oh. That one's too bad. Yeah, but you don't that get points for in the bar. That's not in the bar. <laughs> right, come on, Z. Ready? You believe in me. I do, I do. Okay, okay. thank you. You've got this. So you give it a rest. Oh, I reckon I could get that, you know. <laughs> Zee, thanks so much for the challenge. Obviously, I don't want to talk about it too much, but I have won overall, all the episodes yeah. combined. <laughs> there we go, that happened That happened in the last episode as well, actually. I'm, God, my wrong. arm's aching. <laughs> my arm's up here, my arm's killing me. But no, Zee, thank you so, so much. Oh, Rosie, it's been a pleasure. All right? Thank I love that. Okay. Sportsmanship. No, right. listen, That's we like right. that. Love Let's it. see, thank you so thank much. You. Right. So much thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. What an amazing tournament it's been so far, and I can't believe we're already on our way to the final. The atmosphere is going to be electric, and there's no better places there. Come on, Wembley Stadium, iconic.